Alright, so we will now try to solve this problem. This involves projectile motion. Now we have a projectile with a muzzle velocity of 550 meters per second and it is fired from a gun on top of a cliff 460 meters above the sea level. Now if we'll try to draw our figure, we have a cliff which is 460 meters above the sea level. So this is 460 meters and then below that we have our sea. Now if we'll extend this, we actually have a gun and then let's just assume that the distance it fires from is approximately the ground level. Now in this problem, if the projectile hits the ocean surface 49.2 seconds after being fired, we have to determine the angle of elevation of the gun and then next, we have to compute the range and then we also need to compute the highest point attained above the cliff. And so this gun fires a projectile and then the movement will be like this. The projectile will just actually touch the edge of the cliff and then it will continue moving downward and so this is our figure and so this is the angle of elevation of the gun with respect to the horizontal so this is let's say theta well this is the highest point attained above the cliff so this is the highest point and then the range is actually the total horizontal distance covered by the projectile and so if we'll extend this line up to the point where the projectile hits the ocean surface this is now our range now take note here that 49.2 seconds accounts for the total time traveled by the projectile up to this point now let's also write this given we have an initial velocity of 550 meter per second and so what we're gonna do here is we'll just actually use the point where the projectile hits the ocean which is at this point now that's 49.2 seconds now the shortcut here is since this is 460 meters below the initial point then we'll actually take y as negative and then remember that we have y equals vit plus minus one half at squared so our y is going to be minus 460. So minus 460 equals vi, which is, since this is along y, we have vi sine theta. And then multiplied by the time, which is 49.2. So this is 49.2. And so since at this initial point, gravity is resisting the movement of the object, then we'll use minus. The sign here always depends on the initial point. Now since on the initial point, we have the vertical component going upward, gravity will now resist that movement. So this is minus, and then we have 1 half times 9.81 multiplied by t, which is still 49.2, and then squared. And so since we have vi, which is 550, we only have theta as our unknown. And so we can now solve that. We have minus 460 equals 550 times sine theta times 49.2 minus 1 half times 9.81 times 49.2 squared. We can now solve theta. Our theta will be 24.946 uh, or let's say 947. So theta equals 24.947 and then this is degrees. Now this is our answer for letter A. Now since we have theta, then we can now solve the highest point attained above the cliff. And so we'll just substitute theta in this equation. However, take note that what we're going to solve here is still this distance. Let's say this is y. However, what we're going to find here is still the time. Once we get the time, we can now get the distance. But to make things simpler, let's just actually use another equation. Let me just move this. We're going to use vf squared equals vi squared and then plus minus 2as. Now let's define s or our distance as y and then our a will be the gravitational acceleration. So since we know that the velocity at this point will be 0, we have 0 squared equals vi now vi is not 550 because again we are considering the movement along the y direction so vi will be the vertical component so we have vi sine theta in which our theta is 24.947 and then this is squared and then since gravity is resisting the movement at this initial point we need to use minus so minus 2 times 9.81 multiplied by the height let's say this is y so we have y equal to uh, again this is 550 so we have let's just store this into a so this is stored into a and then let's solve y so that will be 0 equals 550 and then sine of a which is this value and then squared minus 2 times 9.81 multiplied by y so solving y we have 2742.765 so this is 2742.765 and so this is now our answer now this is our answer because the question says the highest point attained above the cliff however if the question says from the sea level 
we'll actually add this value. However, since it didn't mention that, we'll just actually use y as our answer. And so always be careful of the wording. Now finally, let's try to get the range. Now the range will be easy to calculate because we actually have the total time that the projectile hits the ocean surface. Now since we can isolate the movement along y and x independently, then we can just actually use, since there's no acceleration along the x-axis, we have x is equal to, uh, I mean let's just use r, r is equal to velocity multiplied by time. However, the velocity we'll use here is the horizontal component. So this is gonna be vi cos theta. So the range will be, uh, our velocity is 550 and then cosine theta in which our theta is this value. So cos 24.947 and then multiplied by the time which is 49.2. We now have our range which will be 550 cosine 24.947 multiplied by 49.2. So we have 24535.26. So 24535.26 and then this is meters. So again, this is our letter B while this is letter C. And so these are our answers.